Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another tutorial. Today, I want to talk about volumetric lights. It's Friday, it's a beautiful day on the East Coast, and it seems like a good day to talk about some hazy lighting. If you look at my work, you'll see that this is kind of a reoccurring theme, right? It shows up in a lot of different areas. So it's a big part about stage and production design now. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that we do it. Uh, some of my techniques have changed over the years. Um, and today I wanna just talk through kind of a few different ways that we can do this kind of hazy, foggy, I don't know, atmospheric kind of look and, you know, maybe spice up your renders a little bit and make things look a little bit sexier. So some of this is Photoshop and some of this is actually like 3D rendered volumetrics like this. Um, and we'll take a look at both today and you can kind of figure out which one works best for your workflow or maybe even a, a combination of, of things, okay? Um, so let's talk about kind of 2D first. Let's talk about the kind of Photoshop side of it. Um, there, if you don't know, Andrew Kramer, who runs a great website called Video Copilot, which is, uh, if you want to learn After Effects, boy, this is the place to go. Andrew is the master. And uh, he has some great plugins, including this one called Optical Flares. So I bought this a few years ago. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. It's, it's really great if you're in the, in the flare biz, as we are. Um, it, because it really lets you customize uh, and tweak uh, these kinds of things uh, really, I don't know, really fine-tune in, in what you want. It, it looks like we're just seeing flares here, and obviously that's a big part of it. Uh, it is called optical flares. Uh, but there are controls in there where you can actually make uh, you know, what looks like lights and moving lights and kind of beams and cones of light with it as well. So I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, Andrew even has a tutorial about kind of making a kind of concert scene here. Uh, there's a bunch of presets and you can kind of dial it in. So I can't recommend this enough. Obviously, you need After Effects uh, to run it, but uh, it's all right. What are we at here now? Uh, looks like 165 or 200 bucks for the uh, for the what is it for the bundle for the action bundle. But if you're you know if you're doing lighting uh, renderings all day long, this is a, a great time saver. So so what I've done is I've taken Andrew's plugin and in a clean scene. I've come through and I've just made myself some kind of stock light beams. Really simple, uh, you know, white light on a black background. And they're huge. This is like 2,000 by 6,000 pixels. So, um, so I'm never worried about, you know, kind of scaling these things up, right? I have, you know, just a few different kinds and, you know, kind of shapes. Here's a short one. It's red, but it doesn't really matter. We can make it any color that we that we want. So uh, I do I do have a collection of other images that I found online, and you know these can definitely be useful. Um, but you know mostly I've made these optical flare ones that I just kind of keep coming back to, and using them you know kind of over and over again. So this is how I used to do all of my volumetrics. Uh, if we look at, uh, let's see, if we go back here to like, what's a good one here? Oh yeah, like Super Bowl halftime. Here we go, Bruno Mars. So all Photoshop, the flares, the beams, like everything. This was, what is this, 2014, I think? So this is before I was really doing 3D volumetric stuff inside of cinema. And uh, everything was just, you know, hand transformed and, you know, aligned and, you know, kind of spread out, um, you know, everywhere. Even in the daytime, we've got volumetrics. Yeah, here you go. Um, so 
what I would do typically is I would, let's see here. So this is, here's the monster tour, uh, Bruce Rogers designing. This is Eminem and Rihanna. Um, and so this on the left here, this is pretty typical for what I would, uh, you know, render out of cinema. So really neutral. Uh, there's really just one kind of big hidden light source here just to kind of, you know, hit the areas that we want, pull focus into the stage and to be able to throw shadows kind of where we want them so that, uh, you know, it looks like all the light is kind of emanating from the stage. And then, you know, after a lot of Photoshop, uh, you know, we would end up with a sketch kind of like this. I've written a lot of light cues inside of Photoshop. And and that's great. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it works really well. It, it's just it's a little time consuming because, you know, you really are kind of touching each light beam uh, all at, you know, by hand, one at a time. And so, um, so it can, it can take a lot of time. So, uh, but let's take a look here. So uh, here we have a simple setup, um, just like a little, you know, band on a stage with a crowd and, uh, you know, uh, you get the idea, nothing fancy here. And so let's just add in, let's just put in a few lights here and uh, kind of see what happens. So I'm going to, I'm working on Windows today. I usually do my Photoshop work on Mac. So I'm sure I will uh, screw something up here. So so let's see. So first thing I'm going to do is just take this layer and just drag and drop it in here. So let's park this. We don't need this. Uh, you can see these things really, I wasn't kidding. They're enormous. <laughs> They're probably a little too enormous but uh that's okay better too big than too small yeah here it is it's huge so let's go ahead and transform and just shrink this guy down here and we'll get it kind of close in scale to what we want here notice that i'm always i'm holding shift here i'm always kind of uh pulling this uh, uh what is this like a uh, uh, aligning you know i'm locking in my ratio here, I, you really want to try to avoid stretching and squashing as much as possible. This is, you can kind of get away with it here, but uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, if you can, kind of always keep that aspect ratio right where you want it. All right, so let's kind of rough this in here. We won't make it perfect. All right, so here we are, and we'll call this uh, beam one. Always good to name your layers, please. Uh, and so what we have to do here is we have to change the blending mode here. This is set to normal, 100% opacity. But uh, what I want to do is I want to change this to screen. And what screen will do for us is screen will basically take anything that's black and make it disappear. And then anything that's white will kind of stay. And you can kind of play around with this a little bit, but that's the general kind of idea, right? Multiply does kind of the opposite, where it keeps the black and it deletes the white. So um, we want screen here. And so now you can see it's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. So one thing is that I feel like the halo around this is a little bit big. And overall, I would like the whole thing to be kind of a little bit punchier, maybe. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, we're going to add an adjustment layer here, and uh, so let's come in here. We're going to add a levels, and then I'm going to uh, whoops, I'm going to hit the wrong button. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to click on the line in between, and that's going to create a clipping mask. So Basically, what's happening here is that now this levels is going to only affect this beam layer below it and not all these other kind of layers. So then we just want to maybe darken this up a little bit and maybe kind of punch up the whites a little bit. And so now you can see this is looking a lot better. So, okay, so that's good. We'll keep tweaking it. Uh, now let's hit transform again because now what we want to do is we want to kind of rotate this around into place here. So let's spin this around and we'll kind of move this over, put it on the band here. And uh, we'll double click again and uh, there you go. So now we've got this going, okay. 
Um, so now if we want color, we can do that. And then also this, this has like a little bit of a flare up here, but it's, it's kind of dorky. Um, and also, you know, lots of times the rays will kind of travel. It's not too bad here, but sometimes your rays, let's make this larger so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. Sometimes your rays will just be so big that they'll start to, you know, kind of spill out onto the audience here. So first thing we can do is add a layer mask here. And I'm going to just come in with black. I've got a nice soft brush here set to, you know, like 30% here. So it's, um, it's kind of low opacity here. And I'm just going to kind of chisel away a little bit with a mask. I always use a mask instead of an eraser. I can always go back and kind of, you know, pull stuff back if I want. But I'm just going to pull this in a little bit and then, you know, maybe down here a little bit kind of where it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle. But, you know, this is going to make a big difference, right? Because the light is kind of, you know, kind of hit these guys and then it might hit the floor, but it's certainly not going to kind of be spilling, you know, way out down here. Um, so, you know, go ahead and clean it up. Always use a soft brush so you don't get like a hard line. Be subtle, right? You just want to make sure you don't go too far there, right? We can switch and kind of paint that back in here if I switch over to white. So, all right, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's add some color. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to add hue and saturation. And so what's going to happen here is this and again because i made this kind of in between the layer and this clipped levels it automatically kind of clips this for me so everything we do here again only going to affect this beam o1 layer and nothing below which is great so we need to turn on colorize because that's what we want to do is we want to colorize this it's going to default to red at kind of a low saturation. So let's just pump up the saturation right away. And now you can see as we start to move the hue slider here, right? So now you've got, you know, a moving light basically. So you can kind of dial in any color that you want and, you know, lower the saturation here. And then you can start to, you know, kind of tint it and really play around with it. I, I would advise you to stay away from lighten here, right? Because you can really just kind of do bad things. It's not too bad for lowering the intensity, but when you start going the other way, right, all that black that we're screening out is turning gray and starting to kind of show up. And that is not great. So we definitely don't want that. If you want to adjust this, I think you're better off either playing with the levels here and, you know, where you can really kind of darken this down more uh, or, you know, kind of lighten it up. But also just the overall uh, opacity of the layer, right, depending on how kind of strong or subtle, you know, you want this to kind of be, right? And we're, we're on this kind of hazy background here. If I'm against black, you can see it's kind of different. So it just depends on kind of what you're, you know, what you're doing. Um, and so, you know, what I would probably do is take this whole thing, then grab all three of these and then just put these into a group. So let's call this light beam two. And, you know, so then if we want to take this now and, um, you know, if we like hold alt and drag the group, you know, we can start to add in other ones of these and, you know, we can transform this. It's kind of huge, but right and move this around and you know get the second kind of beam. and so then you know you just start to you know hand hand by you know beam by beam start to kind of paint these in a little bit you know maybe we come through on this one and we'll just kind of tweak the color a little bit there we go isn't that lovely now let's do something about the flare right so i have a bunch of stock images of flares um, so, you know, you can definitely, uh, you know, start to kind of build up a library. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So here I've got all of these different kind of flare files. Um, 
which are which are great. Uh, you know, some of them are big and bright, kind of starbursty, and others are more subtle. But a lot of them have colors, but it doesn't matter. You can always desat or you know, kind of hue shift the colors on them. So if I were to say maybe grab one of these here, let's just uh, I'm gonna just do a really kind of sloppy selection, and then I'll hit uh, Command J, Control J, make it known its own layer here so we'll add this flare now and so i'm going to right click and say duplicate layer and i'm going to destination i'm going to shoot this over to our document here here we are and so now we have this fabulous looking thing and so same thing we, let's definitely get this out of the folder here uh so same idea where we're going to set this to screen and then we'll do a level adjustment on it here. I'm not going to do an adjustment one this time because I'm just moving fast here. But get this set up the way we want. And we might need to scale this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and drop this right on the sweet spot here. Right, just want to make sure that you're doing this kind of logically in a way and then same thing where we can if we want to add a hue saturation we can clip it so it's only affecting the flare and then if we start to you know kind of play around with color here we can get this you know to kind of match up right so you don't have like a green flare with blue cones of light coming off of it right you can kind of dial it in maybe take the saturation down a little bit and, you know, and there you go. So, uh, you know, then it's just up to you to kind of come through and paint all this stuff in. Uh, there is another way to do flares, by the way, if you want to go kind of, you know, natively here. I'll hide this. Uh, I'm going to just make a new layer. And I'm going to fill the whole thing with black. So I'm just going to hit, what is this, control backspace, command backspace if you're on. Mac, and I'm going to get black here. So I just have a layer with full fill black on it. And I'm going to say filter, render, lens flare. Yeah, look at that. And so there's a few different types here. Uh, you know, you kind of pick the one that you like here. here. I'll do this 105 millimeter prime. And then you're going to get this big, massive flare here. So again, a few things. Let's hit uh, Command L and just bring up our levels. Let's you know, crush the blacks on this for sure. Bring this down a little bit. And uh, so this is looking better. Um, I, there's a lot of other, you know, kind of lens flare stuff going on here, right? Because this is what we're kind of cheating. But that's okay. Usually, uh, you know, if you, if you really shrink this guy down, that stuff, uh, it, you know, it won't matter. I mean, it might. You might want to go in and kind of paint it out with black. But you know, once this thing gets really small, it doesn't really uh, affect you that much. I'm going to just screen this. Now, here, you can see now, it's like it's not so bad. You know, it actually just adds a little bit of, like, glint and, you know, kind of other stuff going on there. And then, you know, when I'm working here, I can just, you know, kind of hold down Alt here. And you can just start to, you know, do a better job of aligning them. But, you know, you can just start to kind of lay in whole systems here. You know, and then, you know, maybe you grab all of these and come up to, what is it, align spacing, which one is it? It's, uh, ooh, which one is it? They've changed the icons on me here. Is it this one? Yeah. Um, if we wanted to level these out, which we don't, but if we did, then we could do that right here and, you know, get these into kind of a straight line and, you know, and then we can transform the whole thing and kind of play with it this way. So you have some options there for setting that stuff up. So, you know, that's it. It just takes a while to kind of figure, you know, figure it out. Uh, the thing you just have to really remember is that, you know, if you're setting up a whole system of, you know, purple backlight coming in here, that's going to have like ambient effects in the space, right? Like you're going to, you you know you have to make sure when you're painting light that you're still dealing with the fact that it's light hitting objects and that it's going to kind of tint them. So I see a lot of things where it's like you know somebody's got six thousand red lights pointed in the middle of the stage 
And, you know, nothing else is kind of glowing red around it. And it just makes it look really, you know, kind of fake. So uh, here, I'll just turn this off for a second so we can see. Now, one thing that helps also is because, you know, these have some kind of beams in here, but still it's haze and it's never kind of perfectly, you know, just in one spot. So, you know, one thing that can help is to just add a little bit of smoke. Um, so here I've got these layers here. Uh, let's see, this is screen at 3% here. If I take this to normal and crank it up, you can see this is just the JPEG here. I've rotated it and I've tinted it blue here, I've kind of cooled it off. But uh, this is just this kind of swirly, smoky frame. And uh, if, again, I set this to screen as well, and then, you know, we're going to knock the opacity. We're going to knock the opacity way down here. I mean, this is at 7% here. And it just helps give us, you know, a little bit of a vibe of, you know, kind of other stuff going on. I, I'm even going to take this down to like 3 and it just helps us to kind of establish more of a realistic kind of atmospheric kind of feeling to it, right? And so, you know, that's it. You just, you know, you start to kind of play around with the other, you know, lights and the beams that you have here and, uh, you know, kind of add these in. And um, well, it looks like I brought this all the way to the bottom. Let's bring it back up to the top. And we'll transform. Oh, yeah, this, is, this one's huge, too. I probably made them overly large. Probably padding up my file size pretty good here. And let's set this one to screen. Now, you can see here. Oh, come on, screen. Thank you. You can see here, if I look at this, you can see, right? It is at 100%. You can see uh, some of this kind of atmosphere around it. And so if you start to crush the blacks in your levels, this is going to help take care of that. This is, you know, you can come back in with the white and kind of, you know, up this and really kind of punch it out. But, you know, that's going to help you to kind of get rid of a lot of that residual kind of stuff. And then again, if we come in here, even though this one is red, but if we come in here and we just, uh, you know, clip this to here and we colorize. I'm going to bump up my saturation. You know, again, you've got a full kind of, you know, 16 million colors of mixing here, whatever you need, right? So, so that's it. And I, I did that for years. Um, and it's, it's good. It's just, it can be kind of slow, you know? Um, but it does help you kind of get out of 3D and then, you know, focus on just writing a light cue. So I do like that about this workflow. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's pause here and switch over to cinema and then we'll take a look at making some 3D light beams in, uh, in cinema 4D. Okay. So here we are in cinema 4D. Um, this is, what is this? This is R23. I'm on a different machine today. Don't have R25 loaded on this one yet, but that's okay. Uh, nothing, nothing will be different. Um, and today we're going to use Redshift. I have found Redshift, in my opinion, to be the best at doing volumetric lights. Uh, Corona can do it. Native Cinema can do it. But I don't think they're great, and they're pretty limited, and Redshift is really flexible. It's really fast and really easy to use, and, um, and I, I think it's the best. So for all my volumetric stuff, I use it. So either I'm building the scene totally in Redshift, or even if I'm doing a Corona scene, I'll make a, a different version of the scene or do a take within that and switch over to Redshift and do all my volumetric work there. I'll render out the volumetric passes separately, and then we'll kind of put them together in Photoshop. And we'll, we'll take a look at that. So, uh, so here we are. We have just a really simple scene here. It's just a plane and a sphere, right? Nothing fancy. Um, and so first thing we want to do is make sure that Redshift is our render engine, which it already is. That looks good. And so let's go ahead and uh, add, we're going to add in a redshift light here. And now you want to use an area light. I know you're 
tempted to go to the spotlight because that's what we kind of normally think of in theater or you know concerts but you actually are going to want to use an area light for this so here we are we have this big massive light let's turn on our render viewer here so we can kind of see what this looks like and voila okay so we have this just really simple kind of set up with this big, you know, kind of barn sized area light. So first things first, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to get the haze actually turned on, right? So we're going to come back to the redshift menu under objects. And what we're looking for here is a redshift environment. Uh, so you'll see the minute that I add this to the scene, the whole thing goes bananas, right? It goes pure white. Okay. So uh, there are definitely settings within here for volume scattering. This is what's giving us this effect. It's right. It's white. The scattering is set really low here. It's like set to point 0.1, but we're still getting this, you know, kind of Stephen King nightmare going on here. But we can fix that. That has more to do with the light than with the fog and the haze, right? So let's come back to the area light here. And if we come to its attributes, right, are there, we're, we're usually working in the object tab. I'm going to switch over to the detail tab here. And there's this field here called volume, and it's set by default to one. So think of one as 100%. So if I start to knock this down using like decimals, like 0.5, uh, you'll see that we'll take this down. It doesn't really do anything because it's still so bright. 0.1. How about 0.001? Take it really far down. There we go. Okay. So, I, you know, I wish it worked in percentages of like 0 to 100, but here we are. So don't be afraid to use really weird like super low numbers, right? And, you know, kind of figure this out to like dial it in, right? So, all right. So here we are. So we're starting to get the effect that we want. There's, it doesn't really look like concert lighting yet, but, you know, you can start to see kind of what's going on. So maybe we want this to be more like... There are two zeros. Let's try 0 0.01 here. Well, it was better before. How about 0 0.005? Somewhere in the middle here. Um, also, this light is probably, you know, six feet wide. So it's a massive light. So, so we're starting to get the effect that we want here. So that's good. So, all right. So let's now fix the scale of the light here. So I'm going to come back to the light properties here. And I'm going to switch over to the object tab. And so now, if we look at this, so first of all, it's a rectangle. So let's change this to a disc because most of the lenses that we work with are round. Yeah, so this is like two meters by two meters here, right? So it's really big. So let's take this down to like six inches by six inches. And you'll see, because it's so small here, that we're kind of losing a lot of our light. But that's okay. So, you know, we can just kind of like up the intensity maybe uh, and start to, you know, make it kind of kick in a little bit more. You know, what if we take this to like 500? There we go. Now we can kind of see what's going on. Now, part of the problem is that it it's really broad. Even though it's a small lens, it's actually, you know, kind of uh, not very realistically spitting light out at, you know, almost like a 180 degree angle here. So the, the fall off the cone, you know, is kind of really wide on this light. So here's what we want to do. We want to come into the light again under the object tab here. And now there's this thing called spread, right? And so uh, spread is... Again, there's a value of one, so that's kind of like 100% where it's maxed out. So, you know, unfortunately, this is not like a spotlight where you can just say, you know, 26 degree, 50 degree. Um, but you have to kind of dial it in a little more visually. But if we start to lower the spread here, you can see, you can see it directly what's happening, right, is that I'm starting to get a smaller kind of cone angle here, a smaller, you know, beam and, you know, if I bring this way down, you know, you can kind of get to like a Sharpie, right? Where you're really just looking at this like kind of beam of light here. So let's open it up a little bit more here. So it looks more kind of like a theatrical light here. So that's good. And uh, 
what do we need to do here? I think maybe we need to move it over. Yeah, I, I want to see our sphere a little bit here. Make sure that we're still getting kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see, right? The shadows, right? It's starting to work here. So that's good. Now, one other thing that's not great here is that the light itself is invisible. So, um, you know, we talked about doing flares in Photoshop, but here, if I come down to the light properties again, I just turn on visible, I can actually see that lens. So that's good. And again, you know, maybe we want to bump up the, uh, the intensity, uh, you know, even higher here. Uh, we'll go 750. Um, you know, it's, it's frustrating uh, if you're used to, you know, like running a light board or, you know, dealing with channels and lights to not have kind of normal numbers and percentages and intensities and stuff. Just play around with it. You'll get used to it. It's, you know, just just know that, you know, if you're at 50 and it's too dim, you know, don't go to 51. Go to, you know, 100. Go to 200, right? Always change things in order of magnitude. That's what Chris Schmidt always says is like do a big change. Make sure it's working and then you can kind of dial it in. All right. So uh, what else can we do here? Well, uh, one thing that's not, I mean, we have the light visible now, but if we come into the post effects inside of uh, inside of Redshift here, we can turn on Bloom. So that's cool, right? This is going to give us this kind of halo of light around here. We can, you know, you can make it kind of more or less, whatever you want. Um, and then you can even add streaks if you want, if you really want to like kind of, you know, bling it out and you can, you know, change the number of streaks and... Uh, but maybe set this like kind of scale, right? So, you know, play around with this and, you know, kind of see streak intensity here. Maybe you don't want it quite so bright. Um, yeah, and and then also, since this is just working on a, you know, on a color system here, if we, you know, just change the actual color of the light, the whole system is, you know, is going to change for us really nicely. So that's cool. We love that. Um, how about some nice teal lighting? And so then maybe what I'll do is I'll take this and, you know, let's just go ahead and throw this in a cloner. Um, here's, I think, probably defaulted to a grid array, which is not so great. Let's go linear. And uh, here, what it was, we'll spread on X here, right? Here, we'll go the other way. And we'll add a few more. And uh, yeah, cool. So now we've got like a system going here, right? And so these are kind of blending together, maybe a little too much for me. So I might come back here and just kind of lower my spread a little bit more just to get, you know, more fingers. It might be. Now, worth noting here while we're talking about the cloner, uh, this is set to instance. If I were to set this to render instances, is it going to work? Uh, let's see. Usually it doesn't work. Eh, it's working. All right. I was going to say render instances won't work in Redshift, but <laughs> I lied. Apparently they fixed that. So there you go. All right. That's great. Um, and so now we've got this whole, you know, kind of system of light. So what I do is when I, you know, I'll have the actual... Um, you know, light, the fixture, the geometry for the fixture there. And then just downstage of the lens, I will put this, you know, area light here, this redshift area light. And then, you know, anywhere that I point and, uh, and move the head and the yoke of the light, all these lights, you know, will kind of come and, and follow with it. And so this to me is just, I think, the best. And it's, you know, super clean super easy and, you know, renders out, you know, really fast for us, which is, you know, which is just great. So uh, what if we change this to radial? And uh, let's see if I can screw this up really well here. Let's see, what do we get here? Yeah, there you go. So, you know, if you've got circular truss stuff going on here, I think I'm probably not on the right plane. Wow, look at that. I've totally screwed this up now. Cool. All right. Well, you get the idea, right? Play around with this. Grid's good too, right? We get lots of lights going here. Get this kind of wall of lights going. I think we want probably three by three, and we want this one to be one. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's nice. We love that. 
Um, and, you know, this, in my mind, just gives us, you know, kind of the best, you know, kind of thing. It's not uncommon for me to, um, let's turn this off for a sec here. And I'm just going to grab this area light. I don't really want it in a cloner. I just want an area light. And I'm going to change this back to rectangle. And let's go ahead and just make it really big here. It's probably really, really bright and intense. But this now, uh, let's see here. What do we have here? So let's take this down to like 400. And again, we can kind of spread you know, the beam uh, out a little bit. And, uh, you know, maybe this is still seems really like hot to me. Um, but what's cool is that, you know, this is good now for like strip lights or X bars or, you know, you've got a whole, you know, kind of system of lights going, you know, let's change this down, you know, really low to like, um, you know, so it's like one inch tall here. And, you know, maybe I do then need to kick the intensity back up. You, I mean, you really, I mean, honestly, your best bet here is to play around with this stuff just like I'm doing before you get into, like, lighting a scene and trying to, like, write light cues, right? Um, and so now, uh, you know, now I've got, you know, this kind of larger system, you know, coming from, you know, kind of overhead, and, uh, you know, we can kind of mix that stuff up that way, okay? Um, you can add textures and, you know, images and stuff to these lights if you want to start playing around with the idea of, um, you know, like gobos or cookies or whatever you want to call them. Um, today, we're going to just keep it simple and just get you some, you know, some regular kind of beamage. So, you know, if you want to break this up, you might have to kind of put some objects in front of it to give it, you know, more of a kind of a linear effect. I also do that a lot in post where I just kind of Photoshop in some kind of streaks just to kind of, you know, blend it up. Um, so that's cool. And then, uh, looks like I have this weird thing on here. Let's go back to our cloner system here with all of these lights. And then one other thing worth noting, if we go back to the environment here, there is this thing called phase. I don't know. Let's see if this is going to show. And so if we move this slider here, you can see that I can, it, you know, it looks like it's kind of changing the intensity of the light. It's really more about like kind of is the haze kind of more downstage or more, you know, kind of upstage. So don't be afraid to kind of play around with this a little bit. And, um, you know, when you've got the lights kind of really spread out here, let's see if we can spread these out a little bit more. Is it X? Yeah, let's spread this out and, you know, maybe we'll add a few more kind of rows in here. And so then now if I play with phase, let's see if we can kind of see it a little bit better, right? We're kind of, there's more kind of haziness happening kind of upstage than there is downstage. Whereas if I kind of spin it around, you know, I'm getting more intensity out of these kind of downstage ones. So just be aware that that's a thing, you know, to kind of play with. But you can see here, we've, you know, we've got a whole, you know, a whole bunch of lights now. And um, sorry, this is not on your screen. Uh, whoops. But, uh, you know, it's super responsive here, right? So, I mean, I'm running uh, two, what am I running? Two 1080 Ti video cards. So, um, you know, it's a pretty powerful system. Uh, but uh, it's great. So what I'll do is I'll do the renderings in Corona and light them and render them and make them look very nice. And then I'll do a separate pass inside of Redshift where, you know, I've probably thrown a black texture on everything and I'm just rendering and saving out these, you know, kind of passes inside of Redshift. And so then... If we come back here to Photoshop here, so here's our base. So what happens is then I will render out volumetric passes based on lighting systems in the design. So this design had these vertical kind of X bar on beams. And so I've just did a render where I've kind of rendered these out as a side. And then here's some X bars on the stage, you know, kind of angled up. 
and here's just one center one. And then I've got these like movers on the floor uh, underneath some platforms. And so I'll render this out. So I just build all of these systems and all of these different passes. And then just like we did in Photoshop before, I can come in here and right. So this is rendered in Corona where I've got these kind of big blobs of color and we're even seeing, you know, kind of the bloom and glare on the, on the lensing. But then as I come in and, you know, kind of add in these volumetric passes, again, layered with some smoke and, you know, and some hue sat here so that we can, you know, kind of play around with this stuff the way we like it. And then we just start, you know, kind of building up system by system by system here and then you know we might add some flares in too and so really it's become this kind of hybrid of all these different systems that i used before uh where i'm still using photoshop and we're adding smoke to kind of give it that effect we're getting you know nice flares some of these are added some of these are rendered and then you know you can see here when you render if you just did this in photoshop it would be really hard to get that effect of like the hands you know, and the head's kind of breaking it up. But since we do it in 3D with all the real geometry there, you know, we get a much better kind of result. So this is, I've just switched over to working this way. And, uh, you know, then I can still kind of come in here and write these cues uh, inside, of, inside of Photoshop. So even though I'm doing 3D, it still ends up in kind of a 2D based world right because then you can just do all kinds of color changes you know all day every day you can take any of these that you want in here and come in and start to kind of write different cues and you know kind of play around with the color okay so it's all about flexibility okay so there's a lot more to it right and you have to really experiment with it and you know kind of play around with it um but this, I think, hopefully gives you an idea. Let me just show you while we're here. So if this is what I've rendered and, um, you know, it's looking pretty, uh, you know, kind of flat, right? So here's what I might do. I'm going to uh, open up here. Let's go to Dropbox, Evan Work, Light Rays. Where is it here? Light Rays. I've got an image that I have here somewhere called where is it uh ba -ba. here light rays no light rays straight yes light rays straight which is just this which is an image i found online like a million years ago that's just black and white but if i take this now i'm gonna just dump this right on top of this here we don't need this guy anymore and we'll come in here and so let's go ahead and let's try setting this to it's either multiply or maybe screen i think multiply is going to work really well for us here and so now if we were to transform this so let's get this kind of up here and then we're going to do a perspective change here so now it's we're starting to get this kind of following the angles here that looks pretty good and then we're definitely gonna even though we set it to multiply we're gonna just lower the opacity like way down right don't be afraid to use things really low right it's those little things you know this is only set to like 20 percent here but now you can see what happens is that we start to get more interesting kind of cones you know and break up stuff going on in here you know if you were to you know really kind of play around with the scale of this you know, obviously you could get, you know, a, like a different effect, right? So, um, so I found it easier to just kind of do this kind of thing in post than it is to inherently do it inside the render. But you could go either way. It's totally up to you. All right. So please experiment, play around with it, and, uh, um, you know, let me know what you come up with. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.